Hi, my name is Joe from Comfort Tack, and today we're going to answer the number one question about the ultimate belly band holster, which is, will my gun fit? Probably. Okay, so here we are in the studio. We're going to answer that question about will your gun fit, and I've got a bunch of guns on a table here. We're going to actually pan the camera down, show you the guns, show you the ultimate belly band holster, and we'll go through all the facets to figure out if this uh, will work for you and your gun. Most likely it will. It fits probably 95 or more percent of all the guns out there on the market, but we'll answer the questions. We'll also show you which guns and what scenarios won't work so you know what to avoid. Okay, so here we are at the table, and as you can see, I've got an assortment of guns on the table. I've already safety checked all of the guns on the table to make sure there's no ammunition. We're in our studio. We don't allow any ammunition in the studio, so I'm not going to safety check every gun that I pick up as I go through this video. Just know that before we started, we safety checked everything and made sure that there was no ammunition in the room. We're going to start by taking a look at just the basic design of the elastic holster portion of the Ultimate Belly Band and kind of what and how it incorporates or how it works with each of these guns so you'll know if your gun can fit. I don't want you to get hung up on the manufacturer or type of gun that I have sitting on the table. We're going to use the measurements and because guns don't have a specific standard for measuring, it's pretty difficult to go by what one manufacturer calls its gun. For example, Glock calls their Glock 19 a compact pistol. That's a fairly large gun. If you compare that to the Ruger LCP, it's much larger, yet many people would refer to this Ruger LCP as a compact or maybe a subcompact. And like I say, there's no one way or one naming convention that manufacturers use. So we're not going to bother with that. We're going to actually go by specific measurements of each thing. So let's start out by measuring the actual holster itself. You see the the width of the band in total is just over five inches. It's about five inches, five and an eighth inch. The band itself that holds the gun, the elastic portion, is just about four inches long. So the thing to remember is that with these auto pistols, the way they fit into the holster is they slide in and the grip itself actually hits the top. And that's kind of what stops it from moving forward. As the retention strap is sealed on, it kind of pulls it in tight, and there you go. So we've got this four inch space here, and the idea is to keep the end of the gun from protruding very far past that section. So as we can see with this gun here, this is a Glock 42. The measurement we want to take is actually right from where the trigger guard ends and the grip meets, because that's the section that's going to be sitting on top of the elastic holster. And so you just kind of have to estimate it, but as long as it's less than four inches, the gun's not going to stick past at all. So you see this one's actually about three and a half inches, and as we saw again, it didn't protrude past. If we take a look at this Smith & Wesson Bodyguard 380, same thing, measuring from the front to where that lines up is about between three and three and a quarter inch. And you'll see, as we put that into the holster, it doesn't protrude past at all. So there's no issue there. None of this is going to stick out. It's going to be a nice, smooth, easy draw. Same with the Ruger LCP. Again, fits in. This one fits a little deep because it is so small. But again, you can see that it's held in place by here. We've got this stitching sewn in the bottom here to make sure that no gun could ever fall through there but it's just a safety. Most of them are going to be held up with the grip actually hitting the top of the holster. And so again, no protrusion there. If we look at something like the um, M&P 38 bodyguard from Smith & Wesson, you'll notice it fits a little different. And in this situation, the front section here will actually hit our top of our stitching. And it's made that way so that revolvers, again, don't fall through or end up too deep in the holster. So as we slide the revolver in, we notice it won't go any further than that. The handle, the grip actually sticks up a little ways. It's not resting on there like the autos were. But that section of the front of the um, gun is actually hitting that stitching. And so that's why it won't fall through. And again, our retention strap will hold just fine. 
Now, as we start to get into some of these larger guns, you'll notice that some of them will start to protrude just a small bit. This is a Glock 43. We've got a little bit of protrusion at the end, but there's no issue here. It's not gonna cause any sort of problems and uh, it fits in here just fine. So this Glock 43, if we measure from that same area, comes out just to about four inches. So again, four inches here, we're four inches here, that's gonna be right on the money. This is a Glock 26. Again, we're just at that four inch mark. If we put that one in there, we should see it fits basically the same as that Glock 43. So it's not gonna protrude, or if it does, it's gonna be a very small amount. Now, as we step up to a larger gun, like the Glock 19 here, we see we've got a measurement here that's right about four and a half inches. So we should expect the end of this gun to stick out about a half of an inch or so past the end of the holster. And that's exactly what it does. And so this is where you can start to run into a little bit of an issue, and that is a front sight snag. And so as we draw this gun, if we draw backwards, we see the front sight really digs in and grabs the holster, and that can cause a problem on your draw. Now there's a simple solution to that, which is to drive the gun forward in the holster as you draw, and it'll clear that front sight. Also, you can replace your front sights. You'll notice on this gun, we have the True Glow sight, which is a very long front sight, versus the standard Glock factory sight. So, you know, finding a front sight that has a longer front to it so that it doesn't snag is another option. I really like the True Glow sights, so that's a no-brainer for me. Um, but if you've got factory sights, you might have a little issue. Now, the Glock sights aren't very tall. The profile of the front sight doesn't stick up that far. And actually, in wearing it, I've never had an issue with a front sight snag with the Glock 19. But if we go up to something even larger, like this SIG 1911, You'll see here we've measured, you know, more like six inches. It's gonna stick out well past the end of the holster. And you'll see how high that front sight is and how it really catches. Now again, to clear that, we would drive the gun forward and draw. And that will clear that front sight. So you can do that all day and, and it's not a problem. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's not gonna be an issue. Whereas if we end up drawing backwards, it pulls it right in and hooks that front of the holster. So the idea being that anything that measures from the front of the barrel to about the midsection of that grip, anything over four inches in length is probably gonna protrude past the end of the holster. And if it does, you could end up in a scenario where you could get that front sight to start to snag on the corner here. The other thing to consider is guns that have a rail system like this Glock 19. Technically, I could put uh, a laser or a flashlight under here. If I had that, this width would now increase to probably two and a half inches. And our measurement down here at the bottom, where that stitching is, is about two inches. So with the Glock 19 going in, you see it takes up all of that space. If we had that laser or that light on here, it'd be sticking out here, it would stop. The gun would only go this far and it wouldn't go into the holster all the way. There are a lot of smaller 380s like the uh, Smith & Wesson uh, bodyguard here that have a built-in laser. I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but they've got the built-in laser and it, it's not very wide. So if this front measurement is less than two inches, you're gonna be fine even with a laser or a light if it's built in like this. But if it starts to get over two inches, you're gonna run into that stitching. Now, we've had a lot of customers that simply remove that stitching on these larger guns that you don't have to worry about them falling through the holster, and it's not an issue. So this gun, no matter what you did, would never be able to fall through this holster. Therefore, you could eliminate this stitching and have all this extra space for your light or your laser to fit, and you wouldn't run into any sort of issue with that. But it would require some modification, so that's one thing to consider, and we probably will shoot a video showing you how to remove that stitching in the future, and even how to add some new stitching in in case you needed just another half inch or so. But 
That shows you the wide range of guns that will fit the Ultimate Belly Band Holster. As you can see, everything on this, gun, uh, on this table will technically fit. Uh, it's just a matter of whether it protrudes past the holster or not, and if you want to um, deal with that or not. One thing we didn't cover, and one last note, is on something like this 1911, where you have that rear grip safety, the strap that comes down, the retention strap, is going to depress that safety. Now this gun also has a thumb safety, and so I'm not worried about the fact that this is depressed when I'm carrying, but maybe you are. And if that's going to bother you, especially on gun lines like the Springfield line, which all of their guns basically have that rear grip safety, um, it is going to get depressed by the strap. So just keep that in mind. Other than that, everything else here will fit. You see the Glock 34 does actually fit. Um, I had a little bit of a, you know, laughable size of a magazine on there just for the intro of the video, but not an issue. So that's it. I hope that's helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to email in or comment on this video or hit us on Facebook, anything like that. We'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon.